So in the linear regression code that we wrote last time, uh, we find a, an algorithm basically that, that allows us to find the optimum values of B and W that gives you the best prediction of, of the Y values given some X values. Uh, and so here we have, uh, this is a case, a simple case where we only have one X value. But uh, in, in general, uh, with linear regression, we'll work with, with several different uh, X values that each contribute to Y. So for example, and so the question is now, what, uh, how should we change the code in order to uh, account for this? So let's say I wanted a, a slightly more complicated equation where I have two X values. So I have a W1 and a W2 that I have to optimize, like so. Okay, so how should I change the code? Well, if I, if I wanted to do this, I would have to call this uh, W1, and then I would have to take another guess for W2, and then I would have to uh, grab this code here and copy it. Um, so, well, I would have to change this to W1 plus uh, W1. I would have to get an x1 and an x2 and then I would have to copy this code here. All right, so I have a gradient w1 and an x1 and here and I would have to update w1 here, and then I would have to do this for two, like so. Okay, that's not too bad, but uh, actually in some of the later videos, we're gonna have a case where we have hundreds of X's. Okay, so that's obviously gonna be a lot of editing here. And the other bad thing is that every time I attack a new problem, with a different amount of X values, then I have to change my code. So this is not really the way uh, to do it. So uh, what we're gonna do instead is now uh, rewrite or refactor the code uh, so that it works in the general case. And so we can actually do this uh, with our simple example here. So we're gonna go back. Um, this simple example, but we're going to refactor it in a more general way. Uh, so to see what I mean here, and we're going to rewrite this equation a little bit. So we're going to pretend that uh, B is also a weight. It's a, it's a special weight that's always multiplied by one. So our so we now have two x coordinates. One is already one is always one, and the other one is our regular x-coordinate that changes. And so we can rewrite this in terms uh, of, of vectors, right? So this can be written in terms of vectors, where you have a weight vector and an x vector, okay, where w0 is b and w1 is just w. And so then you can multiply this uh, together as a dot product. So this dot product here, which you write in Python with this sort of special uh, at sign in the middle, is exactly the same as this. Okay, so I can't use the, the star, which is the normal multiplication sign, because if these are vectors, uh, multiplying two vectors with this sign will just give me another vector like this. Okay, but the idea is, or the beauty of this is, then I can, uh, I can write it in such a way that I can have an arbitrarily long uh, vector here uh, that I can custom make for each uh, specific application. So, it is now uh, rewrite, I wanna refactor this code uh, so that it does exactly what it did before. I should get exactly the same numbers, but I'm gonna do it in a way that works with vectors that is more easily to generalize. Okay, so the first thing is I, I'm gonna undo what I, what I did here. 
So we're going to go back to the original code. Uh, like so. So now we're back to the original code. I'm going to copy this because I'm going to keep I'm going to keep a working copy here, um, just in case that I mess up um, the coding up here. Okay, and so what I want now is to rewrite this equation as this equation here. So that should be a zero x zero, that gets a one, and that gets a one, like so. Okay, so I'm going to take these two numbers here and make a vector instead. Uh, and so I'm going to do, I'm going to use w now as my vector, which I write as an array here. And I'm going to put b in first, and so b is 0. And then, so that's w0, and this is w1. Okay, and then I can get rid of this. Um, let's see. So, the next thing then is when I come down here, right, I want to replace this equation by just a w and then the special um, oops, the special sign here and then my x. Okay, but the other thing I have to do is my in my x values now I have to put in a 1 here. So let me do that. Uh, and in fact, so I'm going to call this because the x now, I'm changing my x so that I include a 1, and so I'm going to call this x prime. Uh, so let me change this. So that should be a 0 first of all. Uh, and I can add a prime here and a prime here, like that. Okay, so I'm going to make my x prime, big x prime, um, and so I have to insert a column here, I'll show you how this looks, of ones. And I have to define these ones as a vector of ones. And so the question is, so for every every x, right, I'm now going to have uh, a 1. So how many x's do I have? And if I count these up, I have 10. Okay, so let me let me show you how this works. So let's um, let's uncomment this. So what I do here is now press the option key and drag it down and now I'm going to uncomment all of this here and let's start by just looking at x. What does x look like? Oh yeah, I have to import this See what x looks like. Okay, so here's my x's 0, 1, 2, 3. This is just a counter. Um, what does this 1's vector look like? That is just an array of 1's. And so now I'm going to add these 1's to the x value to give me xp. What does that look like? There, right? So here's my x value and a 1 another x value and a 1, another x value and a 1, and so forth. Okay, and so when I multiply this array here, I can print w here, 
right? So this is going to be multiplied by this, and this is going to be multiplied by that. That's what I'm doing here. Okay, so let's uh, let's see if this if we can get this to work. So we don't need this anymore. Uh, and let's slowly start to uncomment things. Since I'm just debugging now, I'm going to just set an epoch to 1. And let's start with this. So this should be w times x prime. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so that we got an error message. Uh, and it's uh, complaining about something to do with dimensions. And so that's the second thing we have to learn when when we're working with, with vectors and matrices. Uh, they have to have a particular shape. So what do I mean by that? Let me print um, w, the shape of w, and the shape of xp. OK, so this is the shape of w, right? So it has um, one row and two columns, right? Let's uh, actually let's just print out uh, W again. Yes, so you can see it has one row obviously and two columns. And if I print out XP, right, that has ten rows and two columns. Now, when you want to multiply two matrices together. You, what the rule is, if you look up matrix multiply, is that this number here, so the number of columns here, have to match the number of rows here. That's how multi matrix multiplication works. So if you're confused about that, maybe maybe Google it, find a YouTube um, video or something that explains about matrix multiplication. But for our purposes now, we're just going to have this rule in mind. I have to get this number here. Uh, to equal this number and then the matrix multiplication will work. Okay, and so basically what I have to do is I have to flip this around. I have to flip the number, I have to flip the columns and the rows so that I get um, two rows and ten columns. And so the way you do that is by the transpose. So if I write dot t here and dot t here, right, then you can see that I've just flipped I flipped the x matrix, which is just matrix is just a, a, a vector of vectors. Okay, so that this number here now equals this number. Okay, so what I have to do is multiply the weight vector or matrix by the xp matrix transpose. Okay, let's see if this works. Yes, at least I don't get any error messages. Okay, so I can get rid of the print statements here, and let's see. So this should work. Uh, well, let's see if it works. Ah, okay. So that didn't work. It's complaining about something. Um, and again, it it probably has to do with the shape. So let's uh, let's print the shape of y. and the shape of y predicted this yeah okay so so that's that's different right uh, you can't subtract two vectors or or arrays in general that have a different uh, dimension so this gets a little technical basically in python um, there's a difference between a vector and uh, and a matrix right this is basically a matrix with one row and ten columns, and this is just a vector. So the best solution is to try to make this dimension or this shape here the same as this shape. And so the way you do that um, is the following. So we need to take y. We need to make it uh, into. We need to take the values of y and then we need to reshape it like so. And so basically, how did I figure that out? I, I, I googled it. 
Uh, let's, but according to Google, this should work. Let's see. Yes, so now they have the same shape. Um, and I didn't get an error message here. Okay, so let's let's move on. Uh, I guess I don't need the I don't need this print statement anymore. Uh, let's see. Then from this, I get an error, and I should be able to calculate the the L two loss. Yes. Uh, okay, so now I don't need a gradient for B and W separately. I should just be able to get a vector or a matrix of gradients that holds the gradient for, for the first element and the second element. So I'm now working with XP here and so let's see let's see if that works or if I get an error message. Okay that seems to work. But there is, yes, there's, there's one important change now. And so I have this mean here, right? And that basically adds up. I have a, um, I have a star here, right? Which should actually be this matrix multiply. This matrix multiply, remember, this multiplies things and then adds them up. So, which is basically what the mean does. So I don't need this mean anymore. I should just be able to, to have this. And I don't have to call it gradient W anymore. I just have the gradient. So let's see. Okay, so there's one important difference between calculating the mean and doing it this way. And so that is that when I do the mean, I add everything up, but then I also divide by the number of elements. So what I need to figure out, so in this case, there are 10, right? Um, so actually the best thing to do is here n, if n is the number of data points, uh, that should be the length of the x vector. That should, that should be 10. So let's make sure that's 10. Um, yes, that's 10. So then I can remove this. I have n here, and here I have to divide by n to get the average. Okay, so, so remember the idea is that I do exactly what I did before. I should get exactly, if everything goes correctly, I should get exactly the same values. And that means I have to divide by n. Okay, then I have to update w with my gradient. So let's see if that works. Okay, well, I didn't get any error messages, so let's just uncomment the rest and see if I get exactly the same as I did before. Um, so let's start with one epoch here. And it's complaining about B. Yes, there's no reason. B is not defined anymore. That is included in my, in my weight array. Okay, so let's see that looks familiar, but let me just rerun this with one epoch and see if I get the same thing. Yes, I just have to remember that I switched the order of, of B and W. Okay, and just to make absolutely sure, uh, let's see if this is converge, converging. So uh, let's try to run 10,000 epochs. Yes, and so that seems to converge exactly like it did before. Um, okay, and so then I have something very general now, right? Because if um, I now have more x values, as we'll see uh, in the next video, then it should be able to work just fine. One thing 
um, that is still that I still have to do manually, uh, right? Is that let's say I, I I change the problem and I have uh, five different x values, then I still have to come up with with some values, five values here, well six because there's also the bias uh, that I have to type in, and so that's not that's not good. And the other thing is I really should be able to pick some values automatically. And so the best is probably to pick them randomly. Um, and I should, the best way is probably some random values between negative one and one. At least that, that seems like a good idea to me. So what I'm going to do here is type uh, NP random. Uh, dot rand and so that what this function does here is basically give me this gives me a random number so let's just try it up here what does this do this gives me random numbers uh, between 0 and 1 okay so every time I run it I get something different Okay, but it's between 0 and 1, and I want it between 1 and minus 1. So I can multiply this by 2 and subtract 1. See, and I get different values every time. Okay, so let's see, let's see if it still works with a different guess. Uh, I don't need this, I can delete that. Yes, that seemed to work. Let's try it again with a different guess. That seems to work. Different guess. That seems to work. Excellent. Right? And so now the only thing I have to change uh, once I feed it different x values is just uh, I just have to change this one single number here. Right? If I want uh, five random values, then I change this number to five and then I get a vector of five random values. Okay, excellent. So now we refactored our code. Uh, and we're ready to use it in a more complex situation. So that'll happen on the next video.